Um, apparently, beanies affect the microphones, so I'm going to be wearing the beanie for this talk, but don't confuse me with Amber, who's actually wearing this hat all week, and it's a very, very warm hat. Um, Amber Brown is going to be talking about what's probably the longest talk title um, in this mini-conf. Uh, why Twisted is the best and how it will make your application awesome. Hello everyone, I raise a cup of tea to you, because there's tea, it's great. Um, I'm Amber, um, I'm also known as Hawkeye about the internet. Uh, here is my Twitter account and my domain name. If you want to see all of the many things I do and all of the terrible tweets I make. I live in Melbourne. Yay, Melbourne. And I'm here to talk about Twisted. Now, this is the logo. This is uh, how we represent ourselves. Um, now, what do I have to do with the project? Well, I've been the release manager for like this many versions. Um, it's year dated and then the X number of releases. So I've been the release manager since uh, the l l later part of 2013. So I am pretty deep in it now. So what is Twisted? Well, it's a framework, and it's written in Python 2 and Python 3, and you use it for concurrent networking. So what is concurrent networking, and how is it different from how we usually do things? Well, here's what your standard web app looks like, for example. You have many clients, and they go to your, your Django, for example. But it doesn't quite really work like this, because Django and Flask and all of those sorts of web frameworks only really process one request at a time. So what you do is you have something like this, where all of the clients connect using TCP to, say, Nginx, and then Nginx spins up and runs different instances of Django, which it then sends a single response to at a time. Now, a twisted application looks more like this. There isn't any in the middle, um, and it can handle multiple requests by itself. How does it do this? Operating system input output primitives. Yay! Essentially, it means that Twisted keeps a list of connections that your application cares about. It asks the operating system which of those connections, so for example, a socket, um, can be different ki uh, kinds of sockets, for example, or can be sockets or different kinds of file descriptors, like local files or uh, even serial ports. So it asks which of these are ready. And all of the major operating systems, just Linux as an example here because it's more fitting, will have a function. Uh, this one is select, which is kind of the standard one that all the operating systems implement. We'll tell you what sockets are ready for writing and what sockets have data available to read. Now what Twist will do is it'll take that and we'll process that. And we'll... <laughs> OK. Seems there's haunted ghosts. <laughs> so um, it'll receive the data, and it will notify your app. So it'll do all of the reading for you, and when your application writes, it'll handle the caching and wait until it's ready. All of that sort of stuff. Now, your application can then respond to that data. It can send stuff back, and Twisted will dutifully send it back to the operating system to send on sockets. And it essentially repeats that all, all again, over and over. Now, this essentially means that your application has to be structured in a different way, because it has to handle many different connections at once, and it has to handle them all concurrently. So we have these constructs. And these constructs are sort of interfaces, are known as protocols, which are the things that, you know, what, what you'd think of that parse the data and sort of operate on the data. And then we have this thing called a transport which is the nitty-gritty lower level, so it can be things like TCP or UDP and all of that. Now, the thing that actually does all of the reading and all of the writing, all of the communication with the operating system is called a reactor. In things like async IO and other sort of similar systems, it's known as an event loop. So it's, uh, uh, Node.js works on the same principle if you've used that before. So here's essentially the layers that Twisted deals with. You have, right at the top, you have your business logic, which is the stuff you actually care about. Then you've got the protocol, which is sort of, you know, the, the data on the network. Uh, but, sorry, the data that comes in from the network. Then you've got the transport, which is how it gets to the network. 
Then you've got the operating system, which actually you know, does it for you because your application isn't actually directly talking to the network card. And then you've got the network itself. Now you, as an application developer, only really care about the business logic. But there are good reasons why you might also want to care about protocols. Now what are protocols? They implement and parse a network protocol. So for example, you might have HTTP. That ends up as bytes on a wire, but we as application developers need something much more structured. So a protocol will consume that data and turn it into a nice object for, for your application's business logic to deal with. It's created by a factory. Now, those of you that have used Java would know uh, exactly what this does. Essentially, what a factory does is it creates um, new instances of protocols, one for each transport that comes in. So it ends up looking something like this. So you have your uh, protocol instance, which has its own transport, and each transport is connected to the network in some way. So they're all sort of isolated. Now, a protocol sends and receives data from a transport, and it decodes it into useful events. And it also handles the connection life, uh, life, life cycle. So what is data? Data is the stuff that goes over the wire, so it's just a bunch of bytes. It's an over a transport, and the transport can get it there many different ways. Your protocol doesn't have to care. All it knows is that it receives data and sends data. So when you're dealing with transports, you're dealing with quite a few. You've got TCP and UDP. Those are the obvious ones. But other things in this system that are transports are things like TLS, which is a transport that goes over TCP. You also have SSH, which is a transport that also goes over um, TCP and Tor and all of that sort of thing. Now, Twisted, because of this sort of thing, transports implement their own protocols when it's things like TLS, and they can have their own transports. So you can run SSH over TLS over TCP, or you can just keep stacking it, basically, which allows you to do some really cool, funny things when, you know, people have port 4 for free open, and you just make an SSH tunnel over it using Twisted, it's pretty fun. Now, events are what protocols spit out. So they, they make an event somehow by calling a function, by uh, doing some sort of work to let your application know that there's something to, uh, something to work on. As an example, a protocol, the HTTP protocol, will consume a full HTTP request, and it will tell you application about it. With the connection lifecycle, you also, um, it also, sort of lets you handle all the different things that may happen when you have a protocol. Now, you obviously have when it's first created, which is before it's connected to a network socket. You have the, uh, the connection, when it is connected. So you might want to do some stuff before you actually have the connection. You have when it's operating, so when you're sending and receiving data. You also have when it's disconnected and when it is eventually destroyed by Python. So you can do cleanup operations. Now, what do we get out of the box? Twisted isn't just these lower levels, we've also got some higher level sort of things. Well, we support HTTP 1.0, 1 uh, 1.1, and 2.0 as a server, and 1.0 and 1.1 as a client. We support SMTP, ESMTP, IMAP, POP3, so you can do all sorts of mail-y things. You can also do DNS, and SSH, and Telnet, and TLS. And there's a whole bunch of different protocols that you can just use, just in Twisted. So using Twisted, what can you build? You can build a web server, you can build a DNS server. Uh, you can build an email server, you can make your own email server that does exactly what you want. You can build an SSH server, which, uh, for example, that's uh, how, if you've ever used Launchpad, you've interacted with a Twisted SSH server. Now let's go into, like, how do you use it? Well, let's build a website. Now it looks really, really, really complicated, but here is an application that uses Twisted in like six lines of code. Now, because it's twisted, because it's got event-driven networking, and because it uses those base operating system primitives that are generally very performant, this little server here can handle hundreds of connections per second, just out of the box on consumer hardware. So in that slide, we've taken this whole stack, but we've only written the business logic. We've taken the HTTP server that's in twisted, We've taken um, the sort of framework that is uh, Klein, which is generally available, sort of like Flask, 
And what we've done is we've got all of this powerful stuff underneath and we've gone, we don't care about it, we just want to write an application. Now let's, for example, make a Google proxy. Now, when we send off a connection to Google, we send that request immediately, we try and set it up immediately. But how do we know when we've got that data back? The FIRDs, they're a thing. People have probably heard of them. Um, they look like this, but you might know them like this. Promises, for example, in JavaScript and other sorts of languages, are relatively new on the scale of things. And they pretty much came from Twisted. Uh, in 2001, 2003, Twisted had deferred. Then there was Dojo, uh, Dojo's deferred, which was pretty much a direct port of the source code. Then Promises A, which was based sort of off those ideas. jQuery was based off Promises A, and then Promises A+, plus, which is what we call Promises nowadays. And I think has made it into ECMA script six, I think. Or, you know, all that sort of, uh, it's, it's become a standard. So if we want to make a Google proxy, well, we just use some kind of fancy Python 3 stuff where we make this a coroutine using async def, and then we just await track.get, which returns a deferred. So you can do things like you would normally would using Python 3 features. So if, if you want to know more about all of this stuff, it's uh, uh, coroutines in Python 3. It acts very similar to async IO, which uh, was what this feature was um, invented for, but Twisted now uses it. So if you want to know what coroutines are, async IO is a good place to start. Now again, we've got all these layers and we've only had to care about the business logic. Twisted makes harder things easier. It doesn't maybe make them as easy as you know, some other things that are more specific, but it does make things that would otherwise be insurmountable quite easy for you to write. So at the different layers, you've got like, you know, your business logic, which is, again, the stuff you care about. You've got the protocol parsing. You've got transports, for example, TLS. You've got mostly identical uh, interfaces for dealing with the operating system because things differ a little bit when you're doing some sorts of tasks. So Twisted will let you paper over those differences. And Twisted will also give you things, for example, coping with network failure and reconnects, which a lot of networking code doesn't take into account because you test it locally and it, and it kind of works, except then you deploy it to the big bag web and then AWS goes down and everything just sets on fire. And it lets you opt in to the separate layers. For example, uh, there's a, a thing on PyPI, the Python package registry called TX Torcon. Now, it implements the protocol and transport layers and exposes itself to an endpoint, which is sort of like a transport factory. So what that means is that you can write a protocol that is, for example, a protocol like me, it might be a custom one, you might just use an out-of-the-box, for example, SSH one, and pretty much effortlessly host it on the Tor network. Because you only care about this top layer, the business logic and the protocol, and you can just plug in the transport that TX Torcon provides. As another example, there's this software called Qt5 Reactor, which is a reactor or an event loop that interoperates with Qt5. So it lets you write twisted applications that use Qt's event loop and lets you basically write a Python application that does Qt and sort of works all natively. And it's just pip installable and it's really easy to plug in and all of the layers up top don't have to care about it. Now, you might not just want to run a web server. Now, Twisted is general purpose networking framework. It does all of those sorts of things. Now, your sort of, your Django and your Flask and your Python will have a Python process, which will basically run one thing. It'll run a Django instance. Now, Twisted will let you run, you know, much the same. You can have a web sort of server and you'll handle many clients in the same process but you can also run multiple servers inside the one twisted process. So you can have a web server and a DNS server side by side and you can have them communicate. So you can just do that with regular Python. You can have so, some sort of uh, semi-global mutable state that lets you communicate between the two. For example, one of my examples that I removed where I'm like, no, I'm not putting 50 lines of code in this talk, was a web server that would let you modify DNS records that were hosted by Twisted. So you could 
um, just, you know, do DNS and have a web interface to it. It lets you listen and connect to as many things as you want, as long as you don't block the reactor doing heavy CPU tasks. It has GUI interrupt reactors too. QT5 is one of them. Um, it's also ones for CF, uh, CF, the Mac OS is one in GTK. And here's an example. So this is an application written in Toga uh, and Twisted using Mac OS X or GTK's event loop. So it's interoperating natively with the operating system and the rendering system. And it's entirely written in Python 3.5. No native code was written by me. And it runs on Mac OS and Linux using GTK pretty effortlessly. Now testing. Now, because we have explicit layering, and because each layer of the system doesn't really care about other layers of, system, of the system, you can take this, what it looks like in real life, when you're running your protocol as a server, and you can re reduce it down to this. Because the protocol might care about the reactor for, for example, scheduling tasks, scheduling stuff in a couple of seconds, that sort of thing. And it cares about the transport for sending data. But it doesn't actually need the operating system to do a lot of things. So unit tests require zero real network connections. And you can replay data to them. So one thing I've done when I was writing a, um, basically a re-implementation of MQTT, was what I did was I set up an MQTT client and an MQTT server. And I snooped on that using Wireshark, got the, got the client communication, played it to Twisted, and made sure it was the same as the real server spoke back. It also encourages writing code that is free of mocks. So because you've got that explicit layering, you're not writing mocks for things that your application is using because you can have that sort of, you know where it sort of is divided. Now what about performance? Everyone loves performance. And usually you are presented with two paths, the easy way and the performant way. A good example of this is Django Run Server and using Nginx plus uWSGI. In development, you use Django Run Server, and it's great. You basically don't have to configure it. But to get Nginx and your WSGI running takes at least 20 times longer than just running, writing Run Server. But all ways of starting a twisted application are equally performant. You have a different couple of ways of deploying it. You have like Twist, which is a, an actual application runner for Twisted plugins that does stuff like sets up logging and uh, exports it and does you know, all that sort of nice stuff that you'd expect of a, of a production application. You've got a little tool that we call React, which is for like things that like just one-off scripts. And you can manually start the reactor. So all of them will perform exactly the same. And if CPython is too slow, well, you can move to PyPy. And it works pretty good. <laughs> the blue here is PyPy. It's Python 2.7 and Python 3.5. So you can get a several times boost just by switching which Python you're using. It's, uh, PyPy itself is dropping compatible with Python 2.7 and pretty soon 3.5. And we try and make sure that Twister works pretty well on it. And they try and make sure Twister runs well on it as well. So we end up with some pretty significant performance boosts without you having to do anything. Now, what does this all mean? It means that using Python, you can create networking servers that handle thousands of connections at once. They can accept hundreds of connections a second on hardware that isn't very expensive and that you can spin up for a couple of dollars a day, for example, cloud servers. You don't have to worry about setting up lots and lots and lots of you know, web servers and all of that because it's, if you're not doing lots of CPU things, it's just more efficient. You can speak any protocol you want and talk to basically anything that exists. If a protocol doesn't exist, you can write it pretty easily. You can write hybrid networking applications super easily. You can have a web server that you know, accepts SMTP requests. You can do SSH that is controllable by a web server. You can do all sorts of things. And Twisted doesn't really stop you. It's high level enough to get things done but it doesn't try and hide the low-level bits that let you make, it, make your application act exactly how you want. You can get, you know, and change in you know, things, and we try and expose a lot of that publicly so that you can switch it out as easy as possible. And it's all Python. You write Python, and then you just use Twisted for the networking stuff. There's no configuration. It's opinionated in security. We try and make you 
safer by default. We do proper TLS by default, for example. And unopinionated in how you build your application. Now, if you want more information, you can go to twistedmatrix.com, and I sometimes blog about it. So you can go there and see all about that. And if you want to know more, I'm quite happy to talk about it after the session. <laughs> Computer ghosts, I will talk to you later. After the session. Um, so yeah, I'm ha I wear the orange hat, so you can come find me and I will talk very much at length. So thank you very much. This is what happens when you talk about concurrency. Yes. <laughs> Funny, because it's true. Where's Grace?